Hey ladies and gentlemen, we are at the wonderful Lowe's. Of course, I come here quite often to get a lot of supplies, especially for my outdoor builds. So I'm currently just getting some basic supplies for this insane snapping turtle setup that we're gonna be doing. So one of the areas I frequently visit at Lowe's is the garden center and the ponds and water area in specific. Um, I gotta get some supplies, I gotta get some pumps, some tubing, a filter box, all that good stuff for Camara's setup. So basically what we're going to do here is we've got this pump. That pump's going to run into there, cord of course coming out, and then the tubing into the pump. And this filter box has all of the media that we're going to need. And just for extra filtration, since snapping turtles are pretty nasty turtles, I'm also going to have lava rocks in the uh, bio spillway, if, you, if that's what you want to call it, or the bio fall. And so that'll add even more filtration. So alone, this box says it does up to 500 gallons. My tub is going to be under 100 gallons and then we'll have lava rocks so the filtration will be just right as you can see we still got a lot of stuff to get so let's just keep going through low seeing what all we need guys look at these birds about to crash their party they found oh there they go they found some wild bird food tore that bag open or it was already torn open and went to town next thing i'm going to be getting is some river rock i'm also going to need some sand a couple other things like some dirt and other basic building materials for this setup Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so we're gonna look for more rocks at another rock yard that we go to. But for now, we're just getting these uh, cobblestone or these flagstone. I mean, the uh, reason why is because I want to get this pond cycling and going so that by the time I get the rocks from around the outside, it'll already be ready for animals. So I'm getting these right here. Those are basically gonna stack it up just so we can have the biofall at the right height. And then, of course, in the next couple of days, we'll get more rocks to go around to really finish the enclosure off. I also got some peat moss here. That's gonna be for other projects. Um, now I need to get some sand and there's just a few other materials for this build. All right guys, so we have found the sand. This is the sand I'm going to be using. It's just some simple clay sand. A lot of it's technically pre-washed, but obviously we're still gonna rinse it uh, before we put it into the enclosure. But we need to get the sand onto here. Holy smokes, that works. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we've got all of our stuff in the car. We are back home. But now we have the very long and going to be pretty excruciating process of uh, getting all this material and this tub out to the backyard over there. This is where I'm going to be having it placed, right over there. And the sun is already starting to go down, so we have no time to waste, so let's get straight to it. So I was moving my tub over there and I realized there's a way better spot. If you come over here, as I pass this, this is a way better area. The ground is more level, so the tub will sit better. And the plug that I was going to run the extension cord to is right there. So originally the extension cord was going to go all the way around, back through here, and all the way to over there. But since it's that closer, that's obviously a big, big safety hazard to have it running that much further than it is to have it just running up to here. So I decided this is where, we are, this is where we're going to put the tub. I'm going to do some landscaping, clean some of this up. Another good spot is it gives really good shade because this giant or meander plant is right here. So it's going to get really, really good shade. So this is where I decided to move the tub. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is a bit more leveled off, so that is going well. Now, of course, if it tends to shift, which it will do, I'll add more stone underneath it, um, and I'll make sure it gets more leveled out. Now, obviously, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just don't want a majority of the water to be going up this way and down that way, if that makes sense. So yeah, for the most part, it is good to go. Of course, later on, I'll add some bricks around this, and heck, maybe even some plants, depending on how the area looks. Now that that's good though, we are going to be getting all of our materials back over there. Okay, so what we've done now is we've moved all these stones and we're basically going to stack it up. And then our waterfall head is going to go on top of there. And then tomorrow I'm going to go get more rocks to go around the outside and the inside. So that should be pretty dope. Um, but for now, let's just worry about getting these stones over there and getting the waterfall going. Okay, so this is kind of what we got going on here. Now I may play around with those rocks a little bit. I may not keep them just like that, but that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this waterfall head and I'm basically going to run the hose and then obviously back into here into the filter box, which will be tucked away by rocks inside of the enclosure. And then keep in mind, once I get more flat stone and rocks to go around the sides and edges, like say I can scoop this over and tuck it in, whatnot, it'll look a whole, whole lot better. 
Another thing I really like about these Rubbermaid tubs here is for water changes, it's way, way, way more easy. So now if I need to do a 10% water change or a complete water change, whatever it may be, all I have to do is unscrew this here and then the water is going to start coming out. Now one thing I may do is add mesh or something like that because if I have fish in here, those guys are going to go straight out there and then they're going to end up, you know, flopping around on the rock. But yeah, that's what we got going on so far. I'm basically going to start filling this up with water, running the hose, all that good stuff. One other thing I'm going to do is add a thin layer of sand and as that sand gets dirty because this water will get very cloudy, I'm just going to keep doing water changes and that's how I'm going to clean the sand. But in the other case, you definitely want to make sure you clean the sand, whether it's from constantly rinsing the water or rinsing the sand bag directly. Just make sure you clean that sand, otherwise your water is going to be super murky for weeks. So we have unboxed pretty much everything here. We have our pump, which is super dope. This thing's actually really heavy. A very solid pump and a very expensive one as well. Next, we have all of our filter media that goes in this box. Now, let me just say real quick, so far, just barely opening it, I'm very pleased with how this box looks. It's already got a hole cut out for this nozzle right there. And then we've got the biological filter media that'll kind of go chunked in there. Of course, allowing bacteria to colonize good bacteria uh, to help keep our enclosure clean. Now, being the size of our pump is gonna barely fit just snug in here. Some of these will have to go in the biofall, which is just fine though. As you can see here, I'm just kind of filling the box with these here, and then I'm going to add these on the top. Pump is already in, so that looks good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully I'm starting to make more sense now. So I'm gonna cut a lot of the slack back, obviously. That's not gonna be there. But see how the tube runs straight into here? I'm gonna add some lava rock as well. That'll fill up, spill over, and hopefully be super, super epic. After I cut that slack back, what I'm gonna do is get the sand in there and then I'm going to proceed to fill it up. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So I have added sand across the bottom obviously you can't tell because no matter what it's still going to be murky and it is filling up. So I'm probably going to let it fill up to about here or so. So it's not even going to be a full 100 gallons but once it gets to there then I'll let it filter overnight and hopefully it'll be more clear by the morning. Now, one other thing to keep in mind is with sand, if you use sand in any sort of um, aquarium or outdoor enclosure like that, sand has a much, much, much harder time uh, cycling out and, and cleaning itself out than things like gravel do. So tomorrow morning, we'll see how that is going. Other than that, I'm gonna do a few final touch-ups on this enclosure and then get ready to pack it up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is about it for today. So this is what we have going on so far. It's filled up quite a bit as you can see. I really like how it's turning out. Now once again, I'm going to get more rocks to go around the sides here. And I may get a net because of the fact that we get a lot of possums up on this fence. And I don't want to take the risk of a possum getting in here. Now I highly doubt it will happen. And if it does, Gamera is pretty good at defending himself because he's a very aggressive snapping turtle. And he's got like three feet of water that he's beneath. So he's got a lot of things going for him. But there's also one other reason. The other reason I want to get the net on the top of that is because this plant is an oleander plant. And if you don't know, oleanders are actually uh, poisonous. So I don't want to take any risk of him, you know, attempting to eat one, mistaking it for tilapia, or the fish eating one, then him eating a fish. I don't want him to get poisoned is basically what I'm saying. And in the winter, and even sometimes during the summer, this plant can shed quite a bit. And obviously being that he's directly underneath it, that's kind of risky. So what I'm going to do is get a net, a very, very fine net, so that obviously it'll catch the leaves if they fall, and then I'll go out every day, shake them off, and be done with it. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be getting a net for this uh, pond here. And then of course, more rocks, all that good stuff. And of course, just keep in mind, we've got filtration down there going on. And we've got filtration here. So this is all of our biological filter media, as you can see. So we've got some bio balls that were pulled out of the box. And then we've got some long rocks, all good for uh, biological filtration. Then down there, we've got our mechanical filtration and then more um, biological filtration. I'm super happy with how it turned out. Another thing that I thought I'd point out, good water change valve. That's really, really good if I want to do a water change on this enclosure. Um, so I am super duper excited. It already looks pretty cool. I just can't wait to get rocks around it. That is it for today. I will see you all tomorrow when I decide to uh, finish this build off. 
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at my favorite rock yard, Whiz Q Stone. This is where I get all my rocks for any of my uh, projects, like for example, when I got rocks for my ponds and whatnot, this is where I got it. It's a giant rock yard, as you can see, rocks all the way around. Um, I'm basically choosing some to go around the pond, some to go around the inside, and then just some to have at the house to use in any sort of projects I decide to uh, build or, or make. So currently we're loading up some of these guys here. These are really nice, they're really red. Um, these are gonna be the, the type of rock we use to go around. So we're basically gonna choose from all sorts and see what we like best. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got all of our stone loaded in the back, as you can see there. We've got quite a bit, but it's always better to get more and less, so that obviously, if you have any extra, you can use them in other places and whatnot. So we've got all sorts of stone. I'll show you more when we get home. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we just got it all weighed at the scale over there, and we're at about a 1,000 pounds in rock, so not too much, but um, we're just waiting on the price of all this, but I'm super excited that we finally got the rock here, as you can see. We've got all sorts of really cool... Uh, types of rock now. I don't you know, I'm not a rock person So I don't know the names of each individual rock and all that good stuff But um wow the camera picks it up really really well. So anyways guys, we're gonna head home and finish off this build One more reason why I love whisk you we got a whole water garden section because obviously they want to show off their beautiful products Like their rocks and whatnot. They also carry aquascape stuff. So I think it is so cool like, You can just see look at those koi down there that is so dope. So they got pond, a pond here covered in lilies, really good shade. Another pond here. You can even hear frogs croaking. And it's, this is like right off the highway and everything, but it looks like you're in the middle of nature. Look at that, guys. Just listen to that. Eventually, I want to get something like this at my own house whenever I uh, get a house. But look, see, there's a water garden there. There's more down that way, which I don't really have time. There's, you know, more here. A whole rocky area. It's a whole portion of nature. Look at that giant bio park. That thing is huge. Um, I think it's just so incredible though. You get to see, and they have some ponds that they still got to get going, like right here. But I think it's so awesome. And that's why, one of the reasons why I love Whiskey stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are now home. Now it's time to get all of this stuff. over here so we're basically gonna unload those rocks and then i'm gonna start stacking all of those stones nice and neat how i think looks good uh some of these rocks and pebbles i'm actually saving uh to use in my cages at home or in the reptile room in my cages in the reptile room so that's what some of these smaller ones are for but these big guys right here are all gonna go outside all right ladies and gentlemen we've gotten all the rocks as you can see it's quite a bit um they're all pulled out here some of them obviously i'm not going to be using like those are going to be going in cages inside obviously as i said but all these rocks here are basically going to start stacking them around here as nice and as neat as possible um i'm basically going to play around with it now if y'all do something like this obviously it's basically how y'all want it to look that's pretty much it so i'm just going to stack them around to about the lip of the enclosure here and then we'll see how it looks from there one thing to make sure you do not do when you're stacking rocks is don't cover that drain because that's actually a really, really beneficial thing. It helps you do a water change on an enclosure like this really, really quickly. So definitely make sure, like if you have stones, you have them go around instead of obviously blocking the drain. Holy smokes, guys. Well, it's been about an hour or so and we've been working on this non-stop. And wow, it looks a whole lot better. Now, it doesn't look perfect because there's a couple things I could do differently to make it look better. Of course, I need to get more stones going on the edges and to fill in some of these cracks and crevices. So I will be doing that. Obviously not in today's video, but in another video or just on, on my own at another time. The other thing is that would really help this wall or this uh, perimeter area, this outer area, uh, do a lot better is if I added some sort of sealant or caulking onto the stone and onto the bricks and whatnot. The only reason I decided not to do that is because in case I decide to move or anything like that, I want these to be easily, you know, moved. Obviously, if I have them all caulked and, you know, stuck together, then it's that whole wall method demolish and all that. As opposed to here, if I have to move or if I want to change this spot or anything like that, all I have to do is just remove the bricks, remove the bricks, remove the bricks, and then I can change the location. Those are the main two things. I'm still going to add foliage here later on and more stones and kind of fill in some of these cracks and crevices, but that'll have to come later on. This is pretty much it for today, if that makes sense. Water has been cycling for quite some time now. It's still a little cloudy, but that is all right. 
One thing I do want to do in the water is take some of this flat stone and some of these rocks and over in this side or this side, probably this side, I'm going to make a cave for Gamera just so we'll have a little extra shelter in his uh, enclosure instead of just being completely stuck out in the open. So yeah, let's just get to it. I'm going to put these in there. Alrighty, so obviously you can't really see, but they are in there. The rocks are in there. So now he's got a good rocky cave. Now I've got a couple more things we're going to do before we add them in. A lot of this you won't be able to see quite yet. Of course, as it clears up, you will. I'm also going to plan on getting him some more aquatic plants uh, for the water and more things like that. Then I'm going to add his fish in. Then lastly, I have this bird netting right here. I'm going to add that across the top. And then of course, he'll be added in before that. Uh, but then the bird netting will go over to the top to help protect him from the oleander leaves and any sort of predators that may try to attack him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got our net. We're gonna attempt to catch the fish wherever they're at. As you can see, there's just a crazy algae bloom. So it's really, really difficult to see anything in the water. I'm going to find them. Hopefully I don't get my fingers bitten off. Pray for me. Now, one thing you may be wondering is what the heck am I gonna be doing with that tub down there? Now, once Gamera is taken out, I'm gonna do a complete draining. I'm gonna clean out a bunch of the stuff inside. And what I'm going to do is put Jar Jar and Scales, my Red Eared Slider and Soft Shell Turtle in that tub. Let me know guys if you don't want to see a video on that. I wasn't going to make a video on it because I've got other videos that I need to do. But if you really, really want to, then I will. Just, just let me know. Alright, so we're going to attempt to find Gamera here. The way I do it typically is I wiggle my fingers around and then he thinks it's Salavia. His head comes out and then I'll just grab where I don't see his head obviously and try not to get bit. Let's see here. Alright guys, well I saw Gamera's head briefly for one second, but I'm not going to reach down in there to see what awaits me on the other side because uh, I, I think it ended up losing a finger or something. So what I do is I have the outtake right here. It's just pointing outside of the tub as you can see right there. Um, and basically it's just draining all the way out. And that will give me a bit more of a better view of Gamera so I can get him out a little bit more safely. Because a lot of people have pretty decent snapping turtles that aren't too aggressive or anything like that but Gamera he is a very very aggressive animal. Meanwhile while that water is draining in Gamera's tub just thought I'd show you see in the neighbors they're coming out to eat as you can see just gave him some fresh greens so that is super awesome. Well ladies and gentlemen there is Gamera. Maverick is being awful nosy. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab him from behind the shell try not to get bit or anything like that because this guy is not a nice turtle to say the least. He's gonna try to claw at me, but it's all right. He puffs himself up as well. That's Gamera compared to my hand. A very decent sized turtle. Maverick, you better chill out. I'm just gonna walk him over here. Look at this guy, he is not happy. Maverick, you're gonna get bit. Once he gets his new setup, he'll be way more happy. As you can see, look at that guy. What a monster. He's gonna, I don't want him to crack my lens. What a beast. So, Maverick, you better watch it. Maverick, stop. You're so dumb, man. He's trying to bite you. That's how long their neck is, as you can see. So they have a very long neck, so you have to be really careful with that. Well, guys, we are at Camara's Pond. Here we go. Three, two, one. Bye-bye. And he's gone just like that. Absolutely awesome. Now, of course, keep in mind, once uh, this water clears up, we'll be able to get a better view of him. But now he is gone. So I'm not going to even attempt to reach down there to grab him at all anymore. This is his home now. This is his land. <laughs> Alrighty, we've got the last two of Gamera's feeder fish. Now, originally Gamera had about 30 introduced, and over the time, he's just eating them. Now, we're gonna walk these fish over to his pond real quick. All I can say to you fish is y'all got a nice large cage, but best of luck. Best of luck to you guys. There they are. Let's see if we can get them out of here. Go. There goes one. One is off. Almost two. And there goes two. Well, there they all go. Now, eventually I'm gonna get some more feeder fish, whether I buy some or I go out to a pond and catch some. Just let me know what y'all like to see. Um, Maverick's coming out of there. And other than that, that looks super dope, and they're good to go. Well, there you have it. A 100 gallon stock tub snapping turtle setup. Now, obviously, you can always add more fish if you're doing just a fish tub or if you're doing a different type of turtle tub you could add more or less turtles it just depends but that is what we're doing here a snapping turtle setup now it is super hot out so i'm ready to go inside finish up this video here um so yeah look at that let's just roll into a little montage of what we got going on how's that sound
it is hot out there let me tell you that ladies and gentlemen well Ted is going to do it for today's video I really hope y'all enjoyed that setup I think Gamera will it'll give him plenty more space for the next year or so so he should be really really good there as some of y'all know I actually set up Gamera in the tub he was previously in only about four months ago and he grew into it so quickly that just shows snappy turtles grow extremely extremely fast well ladies and gentlemen that is it for today's video let me know of course if you have any questions comments or suggestions also let me know do y'all want me to do a fireworks video one or two because i do have fireworks i plan on getting some more and i could definitely do a video because i know some of you have been requesting that and then again my name is Pyrotoad, so just let me know if you want me to do a fireworks video, whether it's a fireworks stash or a fireworks show, whatever it may be, just let me know down in the comments below. Also, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to go check out Omo Exotics, where I have some of my animals for sale. I actually added three new crested geckos on there. If you are looking for a crested gecko stripped to your door overnight, go check out Omo Exotics, because I've got some on there. I've also got a cane toad. I know a lot of you guys like Gucci back there, um, so I have a cane toad for sale if y'all want your own cane toad, and I'll be having more animals as we go. Also, make sure to go follow my Instagram, TheRealPyrotoadYT. You can stay up to date with me there if I'm not uploading or if I miss an upload, anything like that. Make sure to like this video. It'll let me know if y'all enjoyed this video. Also, make sure to subscribe. If you subscribe, obviously that helps this channel grow. And we are on the road to 2,000. So come on, subscribe, guys. Come on. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you all in the next one. Peace.